The world's first hope for a COVID-19 vaccine developed by drug company Pfizer and Bio Bi Biotech is preventing COVID-19 in early results in the highly unlikely to become widely available in South Africa. This is because the vaccine needs to be stored below freezing temperatures at minus 70 degrees Celsius. That's the country that, uh, that the country doesn't have the capacity to do on a large scale. In the shots are kept at a temperature too high or too low. They can spoil and become less effective. In the United States, large city hospitals are already rushing to buy the expensive ultra-cold freezers that could cost between 150,000 Rand and 235,000 Rand to store the shots for which Pfizer and Biotech will apply for an emergency license from the U.S. regulator, the Food and Drug Administration, later this month. And just after the announcement of the vaccine first interim results, the European Union applied for a supply of 200 million doses on an option to request an additional 100 million doses. The deliveries are anticipated to start by the end of 2020, subject to regulatory approval. Some experts say, uh, making, sh some ex experts say making sure a potential COVID-19 vaccine Scene, gets the people who need it and effective once it get it is a feat which the South Africa is ill-equipped for. But South Africa doesn't have the required ultra-cold freezers to store the vaccine except for a few large research institutions such as the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. That's according to the Director of Vaccines for Africa at the University of Cape Town, Gregory Heisey. Well, joining us uh, for more on this uh, particular conversation, we're now joined by health expert and vice president for research at the South African Medical Research Council, that is Professor Jeffrey Mpatele. Uh, Prof, good evening and welcome to the Globe. Um, I first want to find out when did we know about the temperatures at which this vaccine would need to be stored by? Uh, good evening, Adrian, and uh, thanks for having me. <clears throat> Just to put it in context, um, maybe let's just uh, start by saying that uh, most vaccines uh, which uh, are used uh, in the uh, national immunization program, which is the childhood immunization uh, program largely, uh, they are stored between uh, plus two to plus eight uh, degrees Celsius. And uh, some uh, uh, vaccines are stored between uh, minus 15 and minus 20 which is a normal freezing uh, temperature. Uh, so you'll find that um, if you go to most clinics, uh, whether in the public sector or in the private sector, you'll find, you know, these fridge, fridges and freezers uh, to store the vaccines. Unfortunately, with um, this kind of a vaccine, uh, which is um, made from messenger RNA of the virus, it requires ultra-low. Uh, temperature. So this is the temperature of minus 70 to minus 80 degrees Celsius. And um, you'll find that um, um, only research facilities, uh, mainly in academic centers, um, will have this kind of um, um, uh, freezers. Uh, so it is true uh, that uh, if you were to use uh, the Pfizer vaccine, you will need uh, these ultra low temperatures uh, to store the vaccines. And um, the facilities, unfortunately, are not readily available uh, either in the public sector or in the private sector. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, um, it's not a challenge that is insurmountable. Um, you can actually buy these uh, ultra low uh, freezers, it's just that uh, they are expensive and it will be a challenge uh, to buy enough. Uh, to distribute throughout the country uh, within mm. a limited uh, space of time. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm going to just ask again about um, when it is that we found out that um, that this vaccine would have to be stored at ultra low temperatures, because I'm now thinking about the commitment that came from um, the president of the country that Pfizer, in collaboration with Johnson and Johnson, would help with the distribution of um, this vaccine as well. So usually you know during the designing of the vaccines um, how the vaccine will be stored. Yeah. Um, so I can't tell you exactly at what point uh, during research and development um, mm. the, 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 the company uh, or the researchers knew uh, 
exactly which temperature is required to store this particular vaccine. Uh, but it was known uh, for some time now. Yeah, sure. And, and the reason that I'm asking that question is, of course, around um, you, you, you'd imagine like some of the hysteria that this may cause and some people saying that probably South Africa won't be able to have the capacity to store um, this vaccine. And as you've indicated that um, it's not a challenge that is insurmountable. And at least we got the commitment from the president. Yes, um, so it will require significant investment uh, to secure um, the ultra-low freezers. And uh, if uh, the country is willing to do that, uh, obviously it means that um, um, the, 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 the freezers uh, will have to be purchased and, um, and, and, and they will be used you know, for storage of this uh, vaccine. Unfortunately, um, it might be that um, it's not the only vaccine uh, that requires uh, ultra low temperature. It might be that other vaccines uh, will require this uh, ultra low uh, temperature. Okay. I see in the statement um, from Pfizer what they've indicated as well is that um, this shouldn't necessarily be a problem. They make reference to what they call something that looks like a, a pizza box. It says that we have a series of packaging, we call them pizza boxes because they have roughly that shape of a full vaccine and they are packed around dry ice is in these very insulated containers and by themselves could last for a couple of weeks then can be repacked is that also an alternative i i i like to believe that uh, the company will come up with innovative ways uh, to distribute uh, the vaccine and um, and obviously you know distribution of the vaccine is not just a challenge uh, to developing countries like south africa is going to be a challenge even for developed countries uh, because, um, you know, even in the USA or in Europe, uh, most of the cold chain infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, that is used to store the vaccines uh, is the normal one uh, that is used uh, elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, so if the, if, 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 if the manufacturer can come up with uh, other ways in which uh, they can maintain um, the ultra-low temperature, uh, for a while uh, before the vaccine is um, given to recipients, yeah. that would be welcome news uh, because uh, it will prolong uh, the cold chain of the vaccine. And, um, and, and by doing that, you are actually preserving the potency of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. What does this then mean for the continent itself, considering that we are, of course, a developing continent? Um, on its own, and you do, as, as we've indicated in our, in our introduction as well, and you have indicated that you have few areas that do have um, these um, sub-low temperature freezers, which are research institutions. So it could be that um, if uh, the Pfizer vaccine turns out to be the only vaccine that um, mm -hmm. um, is registered, um, is licensed for use in humans, um, there will be other ways uh, in which uh, countries um, uh, optimize the use of these vaccines. I would like to believe that um, the company might, would la might want to um, maybe explore ways in which um, um, the current vaccine uh, can actually be stored at normal freezing temperature, minus 20. Mm -hmm. um, that is possible, uh, but it will require some research and it will require some testing uh, to make sure that um, even if uh, the vaccine is stored at normal freezing temperature uh, or even normal yeah. uh, fridge temperature, it does not lose the potency. Uh, we have seen it with other vaccines uh, that originally uh, when the vaccine is licensed, um, it's licensed um, you know, at a particular temperature mm. and later on research um, you know, continues uh, to look for alternative uh, storage uh, temperatures. We also know that... Um, even with the presentation of the vaccine, uh, sometime when the vaccine is initially licensed, uh, the presentation can be bulky um, and, and it takes a lot of space in the fridges and freezers. And with time, um, then the manufacturer uh, will come up with um, a presentation that is really uh, friendly yep. uh, to space. So there are ways in which uh, you can get around it, but it's not going to be possible to do this uh, when the vaccine is initially licensed.
Yeah, I wonder then, um, Professor Mpatlela, just considering uh, human nature, that um, there is this conversation now of a vaccine that has been found and there will be the distribution of this vaccine, whether at all it has an impact on how people behave now that they know that there is a vaccine that is, that, that, that is coming. And also looking, for instance, at um, our cases, about 200,000 cases for second consecutive day that has been confirmed, even though the president of the country has, um, has sound the alarm around that. Um, the, <laughs> the fact that uh, the vaccine is in the horizon, uh, this is going to have impact uh, in the psychology um, of uh, human beings. I would like to believe that um, you're going to see more people um, you know, relaxing uh, the guards and uh, not taking enough uh, you know, protection, uh, hoping that um, the vaccine will be available uh, soon and the, uh, and the vaccine will protect them. Uh, from the disease. Unfortunately, at this stage, we know that, um, you know, what has been announced is just preliminary results. Uh, it could be that um, when the vaccine is eventually licensed, the true efficacy is not 90%, mm -hmm. uh, it's slightly less than that. And that means that um, uh, if you give the vaccine uh, to, say, 100 people, and the true efficacy is 70 percent, approximately 70 percent will be protected, you know, from COVID-19 disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is that um, we still don't know uh, the duration of protection uh, mm -hmm. from the vaccines. Uh, it could be that uh, the protection uh, is only uh, short-lived. Uh, so that poses a risk. Uh, because it doesn't mean that if you get the vaccine, you are protected you know, from infection and ultimately from the disease. So you still need to take precautions uh, to make sure that um, you avoid you know, COVID-19. Yeah. And what would you then say um, the message from the state should then be to, um, to fellow South Africans, considering what you've just emphasized now? And of course, we had the hard lockdown, um, level five, which was a hard lockdown. And you could see that there was at least an attempt to try and adhere to the regulations that were in place. But since the regulations have been relaxed and the restrictions have been relaxed as well, we see that there has been non-compliance. I think um, this is going to be a challenge, uh, not only to South Africa, but to most countries. Uh, so we need to come up with uh, precise messaging uh, so that um, you know, the public knows uh, well in advance that even if uh, the vaccine can be licensed, it's not going to be a magic bullet because um, uh, there are still a number of unknowns. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, dur uh, duration of protection uh, is one of the unknowns. So we need that kind of uh, messaging, and um, we need to start now, uh, because uh, very soon we will have, you know, a vaccine available. And, mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and then we need to just prepare the public yep. uh, that um, despite the availability of the vaccine, this does not mean that um, we need to relax. Yeah. Uh, we need to uh, ignore uh, the basics, uh, because we know the basics work, um, and uh, we need to just continue uh, with the basics. Okay, thank you so much for that. That is uh, Professor Mpatela, and we're going to have to wait and see um, when that um, vaccine eventually does arrive in the country, and also how Pfizer will be responding to those issues around um, the temperature and keeping it at the sub-zero levels. Let's go to a quick ad break.